Hi guys, it's Rebecca with Adventures and Pages. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're coming back, thank you. Um, like many of you, 2020 has turned my brain into Swiss fucking cheese. I can't remember the books I've consumed. Um, half the time I forget that I'm reading them and then I pop back up to them two months later wondering, why did I stop reading this? It's not even bad. I just, poof, gone. Um, and since I can't seem to function as a reader right now, I decided that I would come to you with some of the uh, just bookish things uh, that are available to us via the internet and otherwise that uh, I've just been enjoying. So I thought I'd share them with you and I made a little list because again, Swiss cheese brain, I can't remember shit right now. So let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is Libro FM. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it over um, Instagram and probably on uh, BookTube as well. But Libro FM is uh, a a worthy rival of Amazon and Audible. Um, I switched over to them earlier this year because TBH. I'm tired of giving Amazon my money, and I wanted to find a new way to consume audiobooks for the same quality. Um, and the bonus is that you get to support a local bookstore um, or an indie in general. Uh, it doesn't have to be your local if you don't have a local. Um, but, you know, keep the independent bookstore life alive. So, um, 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to them. Um, as a smaller creator and a creator of color, I just often find that it's harder um, to get into basic free programs that are accessible uh, to larger um accounts which is fair like as far as like uh what it means for them to work uh with them in their reach um but you know it's just nice to be recognized so i really appreciate libro fm for giving me a chance um with their alc program it's events listener copies um this is i think the third month that i've reached for it um and honestly most of the books that i've read in the last three months have only been because of that like those are the ones i've been getting through the most um i think i'm gonna do a little short video just on the books that I've read from there. Um, but just a shout out to them for, you know, believing in a small creator. I really appreciate that. And the next thing I wanna talk about is The Story Graph, um, another Amazon rival, uh, but this time instead of rival and Audible, they rival Goodreads. Um, it is a incredible new platform that has been uh, created and run by a black woman, I believe out of the UK, I'm not sure where specifically. Um, but she just built it from the ground up herself and isn't running it and it's free to use for anybody. Um, she has started a like early bird membership um, for people who want to support her and support the story graph and growing without you know having to take on corporate partners because coding takes time and space on the internet is not free. So if you have you know the ability to do that, I would recommend it. Um, similar to Goodreads, it lets you track the books that you're reading. Um, you can follow other people to see what they're reading and their thoughts. But what I love is the way it takes on data is just... It's what we've all been asking for for Goodreads and what they've refused to do. Um, there are tags for trigger warnings. It even gives you like levels to it. So if you want to find out like, oh, you know, trigger warning for abuse, but abuse is only there for say the equivalent of like five minutes of an audiobook and it's not on page but mentioned to someone's trauma. You know, that versus a book that's entirely about that trauma. And because although we, I think, each have things that are trigger warnings for us, some of us can kind of not get through it, but if it's not like the mode of the story, we can still consume it and, and enjoy a story. And so I think it's important to be able to see those layers without, you know, uh, significant spoilers. I um, mean, so it gives you that. There's also an option for you to tag things as you go. So if you read specific books for a book club, if you want to tag something as audio, um, whatever that looks like, it gives you those options in addition to like the normal tags where you tag like what kind of genre it is. Is it fast paced? Is it, you know, a slower speed? Is it, you know, slow build? Uh, it just gives you a lot of options and it's just done in such a clean and sleek way. Um, if you're going to search for it in the App Store, don't. I'm going to stop you there. It's not there yet. Um, I'm sure it will be eventually. But if you go on their website, 
um, there is a little flag for the app on there and it tells you how to get it onto your device. Um, it doesn't require anything any shady or anything. It's literally just converting basically a bookmark, um, but it does give it a full screen functional app on your device. When you do that, you don't have to continue to use Safari Chrome insert browser here to access it, which is great. Um, so 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, after that, I wanted to give a shout out to just Book Riot in general, just the whole website, podcasting platform, their staff, they're fantastic people over there. Don't know them personally, but they really have just gotten me through with their content. Um, specifically, the Book Riot podcast was one that I honestly hadn't really listened to before this year, um, but I had blown through all the books, which is the weekly um, new releases uh, that Liberty Hardy hosts with. Uh, different book riot contributors and staff on Tuesdays um, and then get booked which is a reading recommendations podcast hosted by Amanda and Jen um, I kind of gotten through both of those and I was like man well I enjoy book riot and I know they have other podcasts and the book riot podcast I think puts out two episodes a week um, which gave me plenty of backlist to go through and it's just really great uh, Jeff who I believe is the CEO of it and then Rebecca Shinsky who used to do all the books with Liberty um, and now, uh, she still pops on there every once in a while on some of the other podcasts, but the, uh, Get Booked, uh, not, sorry, not Get Booked, the title podcast, the Book Riot podcast is her primary one now. Um, and it's just fantastic, but in addition to that, I decided to try their reading recommendations, um, program, I think it's called, uh, TBR, Tailored Book Recommendations, um, and actually, I got my email on Friday that says, your pigeon is ready. I don't know if you can see that. Ugh. Kinda. Sorta. There it goes. Anyway, um, this uh, recommendation service has two different options. Uh, you can either do what I did, where I just get receive a recommendation letter, I think once a quarter. And I think it's like... $16 is a one-time fee, or you can do it yearly, and I think it's like 50 or 52 um, Or you can do one where you, instead of getting it as an email, you actually physically get the books, and they partner with a bookstore, an independent bookstore in Portland, uh, Maine, uh, and do it that way, which is incredible. So um, both are great options. And I know you're thinking like, why would you pay for a book recommendation service so you have access to the internet, you're on BookTube, you're on Bookstagram. Uh, but I think we all can agree that both of those platforms are often so overrun with the same, you know, 15 soon to be bestsellers, Reese's Book Club, whatever, which isn't bad. Like those books tend to have merit to them, but I don't know, I just wanted to kind of spice up my reading life and thought that maybe if I got out of the monotony of always, you know, having to get whatever book's coming out the next Tuesday and instead looking at things that maybe are skipped over or maybe aren't always properly advertised, um, I've gotten bitten by bad advertising recently. And not that the book was bad, but just like that it just wasn't accurately uh, advertised. Um, and so I thought by being able to fill out a detailed form about what I like to read, what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to, you know, find something new to look at, um, that this would be a great option. Um, and I actually really am intrigued by the option she gave me. Um, my bibliologist is the person who picks my books, and Nicole was my bibliologist. And she recommended When the Moon Was Ours by Anne Marie, uh, Anna Marie McLemore. Uh, Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline and Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. And the reason she recommended those three is because I asked for um, getting into magical realism, which is why she recommended When the Moon Was Ours. Um, also, I said I wanted um, The Queer the Better um, in really any of these novels, and she said that also fits there. For Empire of Wild, she recommended that because I said I'm looking to read more indigenous authors. Um, and one of my favorite genres is thrillers, and apparently this hits on both, um, while maintaining um, a sense of the traditional folklore of the Georgian Bay Matisse community, which I learned is out of Canada. Uh, so I'm excited to learn some more about that. And then Una Out of Order sounds like it's going to be a really good fit for me, and I think after reading why she recommended it to me, I understand why it's been so popular across um, Bookstagram specifically this year. And it says, it's a contemporary story that's both fun and poignant, um, and it has a fun speculative twist that is uh, time travel. 
Um, and she said that Una Lockhart's life may happen to be out of may happen out of order, but she says I think she's also relatable to anyone who's ever been lonely or felt out of place or time, as the case may be. Um, and I think we're all feeling a bit out of place or maybe out of time, and especially lonely because the Rona has got us stuck inside and alone. Um, and even if you are FaceTiming or whatever, it's not obviously the same as being able to go and hug your friends and sit down with your family. So, um, I'm excited to dive into these books to see if I enjoy them, number one, and two, if they really hit on the things that Nicole, um, said they would out of what I liked. Um, I have seen a few other people who, um, are kind of picky readers like me who have really enjoyed what their bibliologists have sele selected for them. So, I'm super excited to see that and to... Um, see the process. I do have, I think, three more recommendations coming to me. Not like three of this, but like three more times because I did pay for a full year. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, what that's like. Um, and my last, not last, actually my second to last thing I actually have on my lap. It's this sweater that I got from Bookshelf Tees. They now do sweatshirts and it says, books are my love language. Um, as we all know, I love fall. Um, as you can see, I'm in this cute little sweater. But I wanted, um, you know, some more sweatshirts that I can just lounge around in. Um, it's definitely a time for layers here in Texas. Uh, earlier last week, it was 40 degrees most of the week, and uh, it's like 75 right now. Um, so layers are key because you go out in the morning and it's like 50 and you're cold. But by the time it's lunchtime and, you know, you're sitting outside doing whatever. I've been going outside a lot because it's been sunny. Um, and then I'm burning up in my long sleeve sweater. So having layers is important. Very excited about that. Go check out Bookshelf Tees. Um, that's their username on Instagram and they obviously have a website as well that you can order from should you want to. Um, but yeah, they just make a bunch of fun bookish things. Sometimes they have quotes, sometimes they just have fun little sayings like this. Um, but off, everything I've gotten from them has been super high quality. I have a couple t-shirts from them as well that I've had for a few years because their shop went on hiatus for a while and I bought those before the hiatus. So um, they just make really great stuff. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about um, are book festivals in general, but specifically the Texas Book Festival. Um, it started yesterday actually on Halloween and it's a few weeks long. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up the information here to just kind of show what it's like, um, so yeah, it's two weeks long, it started yesterday, the programming, um, is free for anyone, um, and I know this says it's specific to Texas, but it's, again, anyone, anywhere, because again, with the Rona, we're all inside, which means this is a digital festival, and as someone who hates crowds and noise and just being stuck, I hate it, even for things I love, I, I really struggle. Um, this is fantastic. It means I get to be here in the comfort of my little reading nook with my laptop, tuned into the Zoom, hearing authors I love, be on panels and talk to each other, and number one, actually able to hear what they're saying, uh, you know, and be able to really enjoy it. Um, I'm super excited. So the Texas Teen Book Festival was yesterday and today. Um, so obviously that really focuses on, I think, middle grade and YA. Um, the children's programming starts on Monday, and it's Monday, uh, November 2nd through Friday the 6th. And then they also have a program on the 11th. Um, what I do love is there's a note on the children's programming, because again, this is a digital thing, but there are schedules. Um, some of these things are happening while the children are in school. Um, and some of these things I think will be geared towards kids, but I think most of it's probably more towards the parents and like getting them to know what's coming out in the way of kids books. But all of the options for the kids section sessions are rewatchable anytime within 30 days after the premiere. Um, so basically what you do is you RSVP to whatever um, thing. So I think what I'm going to do is RSVP for this one tomorrow morning, which is at 6 a.m., um, which is super early. Um, I'm wondering if maybe this person's on the East Coast or um, even across the pond, but it's called Raul the Fir Third, Vamos, Let's Go Eat, and it's this cute little buddy there. Can we... You can do it. You can do it. There we go. Um, I have a four-year-old nephew who is starting to get into, um, you know just adorable little elementary school style books is the best way I can explain them. So I'm interested just to kind of learn more about what's out there because um, we've been doing a lot of reading together over FaceTime. 
Um, and I love that I have the option to watch it back because realistically at 6 a.m. I'm still going to be asleep. 100%. 100%. Um, but some of these other ones are like 10 o'clock in the morning and like I'm going to be at work. So it'd be nice to be able to watch those back later. And then the adult programming starts on the 6th, which is Friday, and runs through the 15th. Um, and the same thing goes here. You can RSVP for any of these uh, things that are happening. Um, they uh, are having you RSVP, I think, just to protect the stability of the stream. Because um, some of these are, like, really popular. Like, I know Matthew McConaughey's uh talk with ethan hawk is i think on the 7th yeah saturday the 7th and i'm sure that's going to be a really popular one because matthew mcconaughey um is a big uh figure here in texas he went to the university of texas um i don't know about so much now i don't know that he's doing it during the rona but previously like if you were at a, fo a home football game for texas there's a really good chance you were going to see Matthew McConaughey down on the sidelines or even up in the student section or standing on the, um, what are those people called? They're not band director, drum majors. Drum majors? Is that the right? Yeah, the people that are, I'm sorry, I'm not musical at all. I apologize that I just, anyway. On their stand, he'd just be chilling up there, having a good old time, you know, saying whatever his sayings are. What are they? Whoa, buddy, or whatever the hell he says. Um... Um, all right, all right, all right. There you go. Anyway, uh, so programming Matthew McConaughey Saturday, 4 to 4:45 CST, RSVP on the Texas Book Festival um, website. So I'm super excited about that. I'm my hope is that as these continue, um, not just the Texas Book Festival, but like um, I forgot what the big one in New York is. Uh, that's usually I think. Labor, not Labor Day, Memorial Day weekend um, at the Javits Center. I'm hoping that these things continue to be digital. I know that one was back earlier this year because that one was one of the first big book events, like right after everything truly shut down. So they, they didn't really have a choice unless they wanted to like cancel everything, which no one really wanted to do. Um, and I just feel like, um, you know, the one thing that brings a lot of us bookish people together is the fact that we're all introverts. So... Um, exciting thing, it's literally halfway through the month, um, tons of authors that, like, are wholly recognizable here, and I just am excited to, um, look at this. One of the things I do love about the Texas Book Festival is that they will put a lot of, um, newer, uh, authors or just, like, people who are just well-deserving of some recognition that, like, Unless you go into your library and ask for something obscure that like you just wouldn't know. Um, but I'm looking at some of these, like, tacos are a big thing of the culture here in Texas. Um, and there's a section called Tacos and Coffee. Um, the origins of and conversations, or controversies behind our favorite foods. And it looks like two authors, one who wrote a book about American tacos, and another one who wrote a book called Coffee Land, are going to be talking about that, um, I assume, with the moderator. Um, on Saturday, so there's just all sorts of things. It looks like there's something for everyone um, And I just you know highly recommend checking that out you obviously like I said don't be from the state of Texas And if you ever wanted to participate um, In a book festival before I would I would definitely recommend taking a look at it I'd be interested to see how they handle like the Q&A sections and things like that um, And if you've heard of book festivals that are you know in other places and um, that maybe are regional I definitely would love to hear about that put that in the comments um, and may check those out and see because who doesn't love to hear their favorite author talk about books that they love um, or new books that they have coming out? So um, that's really all I've got for you. Uh, I would love to hear other things that are helping you stay sane in the time of the Rona. Um, if you are able to read, what is your secret? Please tell me how you're getting your brain to keep working. I have been downing Red Bull and it's only sort of working. I'm trying. I don't have wings yet. And my brain it's still in like half speed. So we're struggling a little bit over here, but we are healthy, we are happy for the most part, as happy as one can be, again, during the time that we're in. Um, and yeah, that's really all I've got for you. Um, I hope to be back soon with a update on the things I've been reading via Libro FM um, and really anything else before the year's out. 
Um, if you are in the United States as I am, gird your loins, Tuesday is coming. Um, for those of you who are not here waiting to fade our country in the presidential election, uh, bless you for not being here. Because honestly, it's hard. It's hard out here right now. Um, I love America. Love living here. Um, but sometimes I really hate it. Like, I really just... It's bad. It's bad. It's like going to the family reunion and you have that one cousin that always shows up and you're like... I hate when they're here, but sometimes they're nice, but sometimes it's like, ugh, ugh, did you have to bring your crack dealer boyfriend? Like, what, what's going on? So, anyway, America's the crack dealer boyfriend right now. And all we can do is hope that they came to the, came to the party sober. So, that's all I got. Um... I don't know, being real awkward right now because I don't have an outro. Uh, so in the in the words of cat paper cat paper paper cat dreams. <laughs> Sorry, cat. In the words of paper cat dreams, um, I don't have an outro. Okay, bye.